So what an inter you know interesting episode of My Hero Academia, right? I'm so glad it's back. I feel as if it's it hasn't been gone, but yet at the same time, I feel like it has been gone for quite some time, and even though it's only been well technically two weeks, right? But I'm so glad to have this show back, and I think we all can agree upon that. So to start this review off, we actually find out that Deku is actually the ninth holder of one for all and, and that you know that's something that you really got to put in perspective so you know the potential now just just think about it there's so much potential therefore all might was the ace holder and we see how strong he is how strong is the ninth holder going to be and you know i'm not i'm surprised that they didn't make like deku like the 10th holder or something like that because you know what i mean because 10's like it's, it's kind of like an iconic number, you know what I mean? It's the first number out of the single digits. So I'm, I'm really surprised that they didn't because it, I feel as if they could have went somewhere to where it would have showcased how special he's supposed to be because he's the first one to get out of these single digits. And I want to know more about the seventh holder because we even see Gran Torino say, hey, All Might, you didn't tell him about the seventh holder, huh? And at the same time, I thought it was really cool finding out that All Might's real name is Toshinori. I was like, oh, so his real name is Toshinori. Okay, I was like, huh. Well then, yeah, that's kind of cool. But nonetheless, I'm wondering how the eighth, you know, the seventh holder died, because obviously he passed on All Might to Gran Torino, right? But um, I take it Gran Torino would have been the sixth holder, I think, right? Would have? Well, actually, I don't. Even, I'm not even sure if Gran Torino actually had the one for all power, did he? I'm not. I, I can't remember. I don't know. It's been two weeks. I need to go back and watch episode. Um, what was this episode like? Twenty seven. I need to go back and watch like twenty six or something like that. Cause I can't remember Gran Torino. Help me out in the comments. Did Gran Torino have one for all? I can't really quite remember. But we also find out that Deku's admiration for All Might is actually holding him back, right? And that's something. I was, just, I was like, I need to think about this. Why is it holding Deku back? What is the, you know, the secret behind this mystery? And I was thinking, I was kind of like, well, I mean, as they went on to explain it, I mean, you know, the admiration Deku has for All Might is so great that to the point where it could most definitely easily distract him. And that's what's going on. He's getting distracted. He wants to be good so bad. So he's putting stress on himself and him trying to live up to All Might and or the expectations he's set to be like All Might are so high and he's just so early into the pro you know the prog the process that it's it's, not, it's just messing him up. It's not letting him, you know, gain traction as quick as as quick as he should be. And him with Gran Torino, you know, it it shows the example of him kind of being more in a more relaxed state. He's thinking more clearly, and we see that he actually needs, you know, one for all to run through his body constantly, constantly, constantly. And it makes you wonder, like, what kind of stress is that putting on his body? And yet at the same time, it's just kind of like, how in the heck did like how in the heck like does all my do this does he, is his way different because we know his training his, his you know bringing upbringing was different in terms of how he learned how to use one for all so it really makes me want to have me think but another thing i actually want to jump into is it's the fact that deku actually you know sees one for all as like an object he treats it as if it's an object but yet one for all is him it is inside of him it is not an object it is a part of his human being right and we see that because it's going to be really hard to explain here, so try to bear with me. Hopefully, I nail this on the first try. But it's basically as if, you know, Deku's not, like, whenever he throws a punch, he's not swinging at someone. He's, he's kind of, like, throwing at someone, right? He's, try, he's, like, he's like, hey, you want, you want a piece of me? Here's my quirk. He's kind of, like, throwing his quirk at people rather than using his, you know, treating his body as if it is part of the quirk in and of itself. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's as if he's not using it as an extension of his body, you know? Because it's like, just, just think about it. Like, picture Deku kind of like, he's, yeah, he's in the, he's swinging, he's in a punch motion. But it, but it, his mindset is, I'm, I'm throwing my quirk at him instead of treating me, myself, as the quirk and or as an extension of my body. And that's, you know, the best way I think I could explain it and maybe the best way to explain it. So I'm hoping people do grasp onto that concept. But another big thing for this episode was, you know, heroes are basically setting up a lot of character, characters for character development. And the really cool thing about that is we see some heroes need character development in a different way to where Deku doesn't need it mentally, like in, in you know, the maturity aspect of it. He knows what it means to be a hero, but he needs it physically and at the same time still mentally, right, in order to use his quirk. So it's not... It's not quite, I don't know, it's a weird kind of character development. I think character development is a lack of a better word in that case. But like Bakugo, that's definitely character development. The genus, the number four hero of all time, or present day I should say, not all time, but present day. He is saying, hey, 
Your power, you could be a psychic already. Your power is great. Your power is amazing, man. But I, you know what? You look like an ass. You look like a J Bakugo looks like a jackass because his obsession with being number one, and he does. Let's be honest. Look at Bakugo and how he behaved at the festival after he won stuff like that. He looks like an ass. He's a jackass. Bakugo is definitely a jackass, and, it may, and no one cares. It's like it being an Endeavor. Okay, number two hero in the world. Who cares? He's a dick. Who cares? You know what I mean? So that makes makes a lot of sense, and I'm really glad to actually see you know see him get well railed for or in or getting called out for what he's doing in this story. So nonetheless, really good stuff from the rock. And I guess it's time for me to hop into the opening line. Now the opening was awesome, and the ED was really creative, using the hero students as knights and medieval you know like putting them in the medieval period in Momo. Of course, they put Momo in the. Uh, the Freya kind of, you know, costume where it just barely covers up, you know, her boobs and shows basically all her body. So, you know, the skirt goes down like eight and nine inches. It's just, I'm sorry, but Momo's, no. If you're going to look like, if you're going to make a character look like that, I don't care what people think of me. If, <laughs> if you're going to make a character smoking like Momo, you can't try to say, you can't say, She's 15. No, 15 year olds don't look like that. Given, I know people are, people always say, oh, people, you never know how old these girls are nowadays. But no, no, still, I, I get that. But they don't look like, look like that nowadays. Like, Momo looks like she's 28. For God, for the love of God. No, no, no. What? Oh, I guess, yay. Every show's got to have its fan service. At least my Hero Academia even makes fun of itself sometimes. It's kind of like, yeah, fan service section. I remember the cheerleading costume. That, that seems hilarious. But nonetheless, other than that, though, the Snake Hero is uh, pretty nice. And yes, those two ladies that she brought on to be her intern sidekicks are also pretty nice because... They're cute young ladies, as she said. But at the same time, we see all the you know see these heroes like giving, trying to set up these characters for character development, stuff like that, and showing them how they need to mature whenever they want to be a hero. At the same time, we see some of them are really lazy, like my lady and Minetta. I, should, I I knew it. Whenever I saw my lady, I was like, Minetta did this, didn't he? he joined her, and he's like, oh, man, I can't. I'm stuck doing this work. This isn't the kind of role playing I imagined. I'm like, Minetta. Minetta, Minetta, Min Minetta, my man. If you got a piece of that, I'd have to applaud you, but still, man. Mount Lady's out of your league. <laughs> I better step in and take care of that.